Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Ladero and Danielle Hart here. So, we felt that it was very important to talk about exactly why we left Christianity. We've been getting a lot, a lot, a lot of messages from people asking details and specifics. And so we were a little bit hesitant on doing a video like this, but we feel that it's a part of our journey, right? Our journey to converting to Orthodox Judaism, we felt that it, it was necessary for us just to kind of lay out just some thoughts. And again, this isn't to try and uh, you know, be disrespectful, to be rude, because again, we say in all of our videos, we respect everybody's journey, we respect uh, where people are in their faith walk. Again, this is part of our transition. And so we want to kind of talk about how we used to think, what, are, what were some of the things in Christianity that stood out to us that made us want to transition and to start thinking a little bit differently. Right. Hey guys, we just want to mention as well too that we will be using our phone for some notes because uh, we do have some key points that we want to mention that really uh, help us make our decision to transition into Judaism. So like, like we said before, we were, we were Christians, we were very, very strong, devout Christians. And <clears throat> as we began to start asking questions, a lot of different things started to pop out mm -hmm. and we had to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so one of the things that we started thinking about was during the time of the New Testament, the only books that they had at that time was the Tanakh. Mm -hmm. Right, and so for those who don't know, the Tanakh is what what Christianity calls the Old Testament. So um, the Tanakh is the five books of Moses, the writings, and the prophets. Mm -hmm. So we started thinking that if these were the books that the Jewish people had, then obviously this is what they were learning from. During that time, there was no New Testament. Exactly. The New Testament wasn't the books of the New Testament wasn't written until years later after Jesus' death, and it wasn't canonized until what the you know until the, the fourth century so we said this must be the authoritative book of that time exactly. so what is that book during that time when we were trying to figure out what is that book we never heard of the tanakh right we never yeah. heard of um you know torah so it was really new to us and so we really wanted to dive deeper and go okay what is this all about right. why haven't we been taught this and it was interesting because because when we when we looked, when we got our hands on a Tanakh, right, which is a, the, the, the Jewish scriptures, then we compared it to our King James Version or our New or, or, uh, or NIV Version, right, mm -hmm. or any Christian Bible. Mm -hmm. We held it up together and it was different. Yeah. And, and that, that was a big shock for us yeah. because it shouldn't have been different. We just didn't understand, like, why is this so different? You know, why would something be so different that Jesus talked about and what he said he learned from like the order was changed mm -hmm. and that made us ask questions why is the order changed right and like the in, in the christian bible in in the old testament you have the old testament ending with malachi mm -hmm. but then in the jewish bible it, it, it ended with second chronicles and so these were things that that just raised eyebrows and i yeah. said it shouldn't it shouldn't be different mm -hmm. it should be the same thing across the board you know so, so as we started learning more, you go into books like Deuteronomy where it talks about, where, where it talks about God saying, don't add mm -hmm. or take away from anything that I command you, right? Yeah. Meaning don't, don't take away from this book, mm -hmm. don't add to it. That was simple to understand for us, yeah. right? And then, it, then you go into Psalms where it talks about the Torah is perfect. And so these were just simple understandings for us and we looked at our situation or what was in front of us, mm -hmm. and there was clearly an addition to the Jewish scriptures. And I think that's the thing, like Ladero made a point, was like it was simple for us to understand. I think we never tried to fight it or tried to argue what was said. We, we looked at it, we were intrigued, and then we just dove deeper into, you know, what does this necessarily mean? You know, we just had, wanted to have this deeper understanding. We had an open mind and an open heart to want to learn. So that's something that we definitely want to express is that, you know, on this journey, we were very open to learning. I mean, one thing that was very clear was that the New Testament was legit attached on <laughs> to the Jewish Bible, right? Which was interesting to us because the Torah clearly said, you know, not to add anything to it, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And then again, it's like, it's perfect, you know? So I'm like, 
like why, why? why why does it need to be changed yeah you start seeing that and there there's a lot of differences like yeah. uh, i mean besides the fact that a lot of the books were are, are out of order mm -hmm. and things like that yeah. but then you start coming across a lot of mistranslations i mean a lot i mean <laughs> I, we we I, we don't have enough video footage you know <laughs> to go through that um and this 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 isn't being disrespectful but it, it's you know this it's something that that you can just kind of look up but like for example one thing that really got us we were looking at matthew mm -hmm. matthew 2 i believe 13 somewhere around there where it says the lord appeared to joseph in a dream he said get up take the child and his mother to egypt stay there until i tell you for Herod is going to search and kill the and search for the child and kill him so he got up took the child uh, and his mother and by night and went to egypt uh, where he stayed where he stayed until the death of herod this fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet out of Egypt I called my son. So anytime, so we started learning that anytime that the New Testament says, and yeah. this fulfilled mm -hmm. what God said or God was spoken through by the prophet, that's that that was clearly that was clearly referring to one of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Right? That was it was simple to understand that. So so what do we do? We started looking through the New Testament and finding every time every time a prophet was quoted right or it would say something like this was fulfilled by such and such or you know this event happened was a this event happening was a fulfillment of what was spoken of by the prophet yeah so what do you do you go so, so you go to that prophet and you see what it said yeah so that's what we did Hosea right and that's the English way to say it 11 it clearly says this when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt, I caught my son. Mm -hmm. That has that has nothing to do with Jesus at all, right? Yeah, and so okay, c coming from a background of Christianity, that's where a lot of the Christians get a lot of the stuff mixed up, and they say that prophecy had to do with you know JC, uh, which had nothing to do with him. That's why it's important that we had to understand. You know coming from the Torah and Tanakh and understanding the prophets because in Christianity you are taught that the Old Testament which is the Tanakh is done away with so in our minds we're not thinking oh this is something that's important we need to reference this right. we need to go back to this which is the key thing if you don't go back to that then you have no idea then what you're reading or understanding one thing that caused us to raise an eyebrow was the fact that that G Jesus was a Jew exactly and and he you know according to the New Testament he he did some Jewish things um, and so we were confused as to why we were celebrating Christmas and he didn't mm -hmm. we were confused as to why we were celebrating Easter and he didn't celebrate Easter you know if, if anything it was a it, it was a Pesach if anything you know it, it was a Hanukkah yeah you know and so these were just again questions that were uh, just it was mind-boggling because yeah. I'm like, well, we're following this man, we're we're worshiping this man, um, but we're, we're like we're not doing we're really not doing anything that he that he did, mm -hmm. you know. So that was that that was interesting for us, you yeah. know. Yeah, we were actually really wondering like, why are we following more of Paul's teachings than Jesus's teachings, you know? So it was. Uh, very interesting to us because a lot of the stuff that we were doing came from Paul. She she mentioned she mentioned Paul. Yeah. Um. So so it says, you know, Jesus claimed that he did not intend to change the law of Moses, right? So I'm just kind of piggyback on what she said, right? He said, "Think not that I have come to abolish the law, which was the, which he meant the Torah mm -hmm. and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but I come to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Truly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away." Not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men to do so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Right? Mm -hmm. I believe that's Matthew 5. The crazy thing is this. Paul started teaching the opposite of this. Paul literally taught that the law was done away with. And right, so there was a, you know, Paul was saying one thing. Right. And then Jesus was saying a whole different thing. Yeah. You know, so these were, the things weren't lining up. Exactly. Right? So we said in our videos, before that a lot of things just wasn't making sense and these are some of the things that we're talking about now, right that's that's why we wanted to do a video yeah right um 
And again, we're doing this video. This video is so that you guys have an understanding of our transition and some of the things that we were thinking, right? This is not to bash any Christians. If there's Christians that are watching this, this is not our heart at all, our intentions. This is our story. This is why we went down the road of Judaism and why we are transitioning into convert and converting into Judaism is because things just weren't making sense. We did a lot of study. We did a lot of, you know, comparison um, and questioning, right? And and so um, we say all of that because we just know that, you know, some people come in here and they're trying to convince us that we're wrong. And, you know, they're trying to evangelize to us. And that's, you guys, we're just asking that you don't come into our page and comment in doing that. Uh, and our heart is not to, like bash you and your belief our heart is to just share our journey and our story and why things just didn't align for us as far as with the christian faith i'm going to read this which was interesting so the torah the torah itself clearly states in many places that its laws are eternal never to be abolished and even the christians acknowledge that the jewish bible is the word of god if the torah is eternal and jesus himself claims to have no intentions of abolishing or changing it why do the Christians celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday when God clearly calls the Saturday Sabbath an eternal covenant? Mm -hmm. Why do Christians eat pig when the Torah forbids it? But what reason can Christians give for not celebrating Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, uh, which are clearly spelled out in the Torah? Um, the, these, this same argument applies to hundreds of other Torah laws that are ignored by Christians, right? And so this is, again, you know, these are things that we just thought about yeah. right like the Torah clearly forbids like not don't eat pig you can't eat it but then on Sunday dinners we eat bacon you know what I mean we tearing it up on burgers right <laughs> we eat bacon and eggs we we putting bacon on we got bacon on the pizza you know what I'm saying oh that was my favorite hungry howies all day <laughs> <laughs> um you know so so it, it was like it's just it's just not adding up like why why were we going to church on Sunday? Mm -hmm. I mean nowhere like where it says nowhere in the Tanakh in the Torah anywhere to 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 worship on like or to go to church or to worship on on, on that day. Why were we learning a Greek scripture? Mm, yeah. Like what was the original language of the Bible? It was Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So if we really wanted to get an understanding of what the Bible was talking about the only way that we can understand it was to learn it in its original language rather than learning it from a translation. You have to learn it in the original language. Mm -hmm. At this meeting, this is where they decided the divine nature of, of Jesus, mandating Easter and all these different things. And so I'm like, this stuff is available for us to learn. <laughs> I'm like, and it's just, just made common sense for us to start now thinking twice about the religion that we, we were, were we were in. Yeah. You know, so so as we're learning this stuff, you're you're going to now you're starting to think about why is Jesus the Messiah? Why do we believe yeah. that he's the, he's our savior and all these different things? So during the time of his life, they already had an understanding about the qualifications of the Jewish Messiah. How where did they get that from? They got it from the Tanakh. <laughs> the Tanakh has all the qualifications. It talks about all the different things, which I'm about to list out right now. It talks about what to expect. It talks about what the Messiah is going to do. Mm -hmm. And so once you have the criteria, then anyone who comes to claim to be the Messiah, hold them up to the criteria. And if it matches, then boom, there you go. But if not, then there's, for us, it wasn't nothing to really argue about. That was the big, <laughs> that was the big one for us when we had to find out the criteria of the true Messiah and did that comparison. And it was just like, okay, well, he didn't fulfill any of that. So it made no sense to us that he was, right? So just so many things had our mind just blown away of, you know, what we were believing in, why we believed in it and why it was not making sense anymore for us. So, so here are the qualifications. The Bible says that he's going to build the third temple. Mm -hmm. So the true Messiah is going to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. But Jesus lived while the temple was still standing. 
if an individual claiming to be the Messiah fails to fulfill one, at least one of the qualifications, it cancels him out. Yeah. The Jewish Messiah is expected to return all the Jews to their land. Well, Jews, Jesus was born while the Jews were still living in their land, before they had gone into exile. So he could not restore them to their land because they were still there. They were still living in it. So the Jewish Messiah is going to usher in an era of world peace. It's going to end all the hatred. Yeah. When Jesus was here, a whole bunch of hatred and oppression yeah. erupted. You know, there was so much craziness that happened. We didn't get world peace when he came. Or when he passed. Or when he passed. Um, you know, the, the, the uh, another, another qualification is the Messiah is going to spread the universal knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. so, so another criteria is that he's going to come from the line of David through Solomon. So it, and it never says that he's going to be born of a virgin. And that's a whole other thing. That's another mistranslation. Like the, the, Tanakh, the Tanakh doesn't say anything. It, it, that particular passage doesn't say virgin. It says young woman, right? And so that's that was another reason that we were excited about learning Hebrew because right. when you learn the original, when you learn the original, then you can then when a counterfeit shows up, exactly, you don't have to you don't have to question it because you know the original. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that was another mistranslation. It says nothing about a virgin. It, 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 yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, no nowhere does the Bible predict that the Messiah will be born of a virgin. In fact, virgins never give birth anywhere in the Bible. This idea is to be found only in pagan mythology. And the, to the Jewish mind, the very idea that God will plant a seed in a, in a woman is unnecessary and unnatural. After all, what is accomplished by this claim? What positive purpose does it serve? The claim that Mary did not have natural relations with her husband must have made the Jews of that time suspect of wrongdoing. The New Testament Christian Bible admits as much when it says... In Matthew 1 19 that then Joseph her her husband being a just man and not willing to shame her in public decided to divorce her quietly the whole idea of a virgin birth serves no purpose except to attract pagans to Christianity it serves no purpose plus if Jesus was born of a virgin that means that that would mean that Joseph isn't his isn't his real father right or, or is or isn't his natural father right so that will cancel him out of coming from the line of david because the messiah has to come through the line of david so how how can he be the messiah if he was if he was miraculously implanted into a woman and uh, yeah and so for us because we asked questions we are so thankful that we were able to find out what truth meant to us right right and and that and that led us and that led us to Orthodox Judaism. And after learning all that stuff, we said Christianity isn't for us. Did our did our family agree with it? A lot of them didn't. I'll be honest, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, they, they they respect our decision, and we appreciate that. We we love our family for that. Mm -hmm. But we are incredibly happy on the path. Yeah. And so so for those who are still unclear, we're gonna get messages from people still asking, "Do we believe in Jesus?" We do not. We're no longer Christians. We left Christianity years ago. We believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Uh, we believe that the Messiah is to come. He has not come yet. We are still awaiting the Messiah to, to come and bring all the Jews back to Israel and so forth. None of these things were accomplished in the past, which therefore cancels out all of those who have claimed to be the Messiah. Yes. So this is our journey. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. We're excited to be on the journey again to Orthodox Judaism. Our lives has completely changed. We are in love with the Jewish people and all the love and the support that we have received from all of you guys. Thank you so much. We love you. And, and we're honored to be amongst such amazing individuals. Yeah. If you guys are enjoying our videos, uh, please subscribe. Remember to subscribe and to like our videos. And if you want to know a little bit more uh, behind our story, we do have our Why We Converted to Orthodox Judaism, right? And many other videos on there as well, too. YouTube is going to suggest a video for you right here that they think you should watch next.